So the Panthers will tee it up. And you see Louisville's bench get ready to go. Ben Sauls will kick it away. And Jawar Jordan, who's fourth in the ACC in kickoff return average at 21.6 and had a 38-yarder three weeks ago at Boston College Waits. Sauls right down the seam through the end zone. And the Ville will start from its 25-yard line. And here comes the young man from Montgomery, Alabama, Malik Cunningham. And Wes Malik, you know, he's been a touchdown maker through the air and through the ground, just thrown three touchdown passes this season. And you know, I think it's been a little tough for him to get in a rhythm. Some changes at the wide receiver position. They have not created as many big plays in the passing game. And I think it's even more imperative for him to create with his legs, which he's obviously very comfortable doing. Tyon Evans still sidelined tonight for the Cardinals. So we get a look at Travion Cooley with Cunningham in the pistol. And a first down throw toward Marshawn Ford. Knocked out of bounds. And that was MJ Devonshire in coverage for the Panthers after a small game. A couple of yards, second and eight. And no surprise, the ball comes out of Cunningham's hands pretty quick there. And you have to know that you have that clock in your head playing against this defensive line. Second and eight. And Cooley trying to find some room on the edge. He'll turn the corner, first down, and then into the bench area, and that'll bring a couple of flags as Marquez Williams shoved Travion Cooley out of bounds after a 14-yard run. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense number nine, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. This, this is a big-time cut by Cooley because it's, that's Eric Hallett, a really nice player coming down to make the play, and that little jump cut to get the perimeter is really well done by Cooley, and then the late hit obviously extends it, and it's the kind of start Louisville was hoping for. Absolutely. Terrific run, plus the penalty, first and 10, pitch 44. Cunningham now. And he will get out of bounds before Shane Simon, the Notre Dame transfer, angles him out. You know, I know there's been a lot of growth in Malik Cunningham's game, but that's a good example of throw the football away. That's a sack. You know, you get outside the pocket. Now you are off schedule at second and 13. Just throw that football away as you escape outside the tackle box. Now you have a better chance of staying on schedule as an offense. Three-yard loss. See Braden Smith in motion. They load the boundary here. Coming to the weak side. And back to the original line of scrimmage is Cooley. You know, Wes, I think it's interesting. You, you mentioned the formation, loaded the boundary. On the left hash, had trips and a tight end to that side. Louisville runs the ball to the open edge. Would not be surprised if that is to set up something later in this football game. Third and 10, the cards on the year just under 40%. Pitt is holding opponents to under 34% on third down. Francis Sherman, a tight end at 235 pounds, has come wide here to the right side. Cunningham from the pocket, wants to take the deep shot. Throwing deep, and it is caught. And it is ruled incomplete, and that is senior Jalen Carter against Brandon Hill. Yeah, and this is a well-thrown ball. Carter's kind of getting squeezed to the sideline. He catches this football, I believe, but it's loose there. I think he ends up catching it out of bounds, which clearly he does. That's pretty good coverage by Brandon Hill, squeezing Carter to the sideline. I think, you know, it's kind of in no man's land a little bit here. Well, obviously, fourth and really long. I think they're probably trying to get a sense of looking at it to see. Carter almost equaled. He's only got one catch this year as a 26-yarder against South Florida for a touchdown. But, you know, he's a good-looking player. Yeah. Tore his ACL against Florida State a year ago. But I think, you know, as he gets healthier, probably some opportunities will increase for him to make plays down the field. You see that. Delay. Offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So Mark Bassett 
who is number one in the ACC at eighth nationally in gross at 45.7. His net number is really good, 41-2. He's going to try and pin MJ Devonshire. You got to be careful here with Devonshire. This is the number one guy in the ACC in 10th nationally in punt returns. He's already had an 82 yarder against Rhode Island. And Bassett just going to kind of flip this over, see if he can trap him. And the high bounce, and they throw it back, and it's caught at the one. That is some kind of gymnastics by Louisville in coverage. 43 yard punt. Jarvis Brownlee, oh, he left from in the end zone, so it'll be a touchback. Thought for a moment the cards had really pinned him. And here comes Keaton Slovis from Scottsdale, Arizona. Tim, the quarterback pit tonight. And he's a really interesting prospect because he transfers from USC after having a great start to his career out there. I mean, think about it, led him to the Pac-12 game, championship game, and really thought they was going to have a bright future there. Obviously gets beat out, transfers for, to Pittsburgh. There were high hopes in terms of how he would replace Kenny Pickett. And, you know, ultimately, it's kind of been an up and down start, mainly because, you know, he had to miss some time due to a concussion. High formation football. Daniel Carter, the fullback. Abana Kanda, the tailback. Slovis on a little bootleg. And this is Carter picking up about seven on the play before M.J. Griffin, who starts at the free safety spot tonight, the transfer from Temple, makes the play. And Wes, I love that start for Keaton Slovis because it's a simple move the pocket play, get him a nice easy completion in front of him. I think if he starts playing with a lot of confidence, we're going to see him play much better football than he has early in the season. And certainly the coaching staff feels like his best football is ahead of him down the stretch. Second and short after the throw to Carter. That's Jacoby in motion. And this is Abanacanda's first carry. He'll drive it across the 35, out to the 38. Minkins makes the tackle on Israel Abanacanda. And listen, this is what they want to do is get him mo moving, right? You just get him some space. Look at it. He's not touched until he gets into the second level, Wes. And because of his speed, if you can get him going. The challenge for Louisville is going to try to create penetration, get him to slow himself down before he crosses the line of scrimmage. But if they're getting that type of movement up front, a big Abanacan is going to have a nice night. See the wing set to the right here. Single receiver is Jared Wayne. Play fake Slovis. Here come the cards. Keaton going to throw, and the catch is made, and there's Bartholomew. A first down in Pitt in Louisville territory at the 43 on an 18-yard throw. Hey, we're talking to Banacanda as a runner. Well, he aborts the fake here because they have pressure coming off the right side, and because he does that, they get great pass protection, and Bartholomew, who's a really good player in my estimation, ends up being wide open. Slovis finds him, but that really is because of Banacanda knows the protection responsibility and picks up the blitz. Kanate Mumfield's in the ball game. Remember, he missed the Virginia Tech victory. He joins Wayne, too tight, set again. And here's a Banacanda trying to route to the near side. 35-30 and out of bounds. Griffin angled him out right around the 29. And Two pretty good looks at Israel Abanacanda. Yeah, and I'm going to talk a lot about angles because look at Abanacanda and look at the angle that Monty Montgomery takes. You have to be really careful with how you pursue Abanacanda because of his speed. And, you know, you take the wrong angle and he can turn what should be a two-yard gain, Wes, into a nice pickup. Well, the Louisville player is Yaya Diaby. Timeout on the field at Cardinal Stadium. No score. It's bow time. Well, Yaya Diaby is one of those guys that is leading this team on and off the field, so he has to walk off under his own power. We get another look here. Yeah, here he is on the other side of the umpire, and you know, just something obviously bothers him. It's good to see him come off under his own power, but in the middle of that play, definitely kind of stopped playing. Something something got to him, but you you mentioned it. Been a, had a great year and been a positive leader for this football team. Look at the little shifts and trades here, Tim. First down, a Banacanda, and Louisville rallies. That's Monty Montgomery, the linebacker, stepping in to make the tackle. 
Yes, good job of running it down from behind. You mentioned the unbalanced look. You know, they end up kind of bringing tackle over with Gonzalez and Kamani Montgomery said, look, if you're going to do that, I'm going to try to run it down from this open head side, find the gap. And, you know, I mentioned you, you want to get to the back before he can get going. That's one way you do it. Montgomery's been playing hard. Four and a half tackles behind the line, three and a half sacks the last two games before the bye week. Second in the full ten here. That's Mumfield in motion. Play fake again by Slovis. Rolls to the right. Going to take the shot down the field. And it's intercepted. Cardinals come up with it. And Yasir Abdullah. It's a nice play by Abdullah. But to be honest with you, the ball should never be thrown there. It's a boot play. And the fullback coming out in the flat, that's Daniel Carter, is wide open. The ball needs to go there right now. He's going to run for a first down. For whatever reason, he just passes it up. And because Keaton Slovis gets aggressive with the football, Louisville comes up with a big stop. Well, the belt for Yasir Abdullah in Louisville after his second interception of the year. And Tim, a critical miss here by Keaton Slovis. Listen, it's a nice play. This feels like an unforced error because Daniel Carter is wide open, and I really don't know what Keaton Slovis was thinking. I mean, to me, it, it's an egregious error. You, you are, you know, playing with great pace and tempo, moving the football in field goal range, and to turn it over right there is a bad mistake. Eighth interception in the last four-plus games for Louisville. So the cards dodge a pit threat, and now Cunningham off his two, juggles the snap. He's got to pick it up and run with it. He'll get a yard on the play. Man, they avoid disaster yes, right they did. there because I mean, he just drops this football, doesn't catch yeah. the snap clean. And fortunately, he's a tremendous athlete and just has a nice reaction to pick up a yard and not if something horrible will happen for Louisville offensively in their own end zone. Cards bring Chris Bell wide here to the near side with Braden Smith. Three receivers for Cunningham. He's going to move the pocket right. Slip it here to Cooley, and he'll get to the five and a flag thrown on the tackle by John Morgan. The 265-pound defensive end. Move out in space on the stop, and it's a penalty on the cards. They're called blocking the back on Marshawn Ford, and to be honest with you, I, I, th I thought Ford held off. Illegal block in the back, offense number five. Penalty is declined, third down. He's right there, and either way, because of where they're on the field, you know, not a big factor, and. But what you need to do, I mean, you need to at least get one first down to try to do, you know, to flip the field, do your defense a favor after they come up with a turnover. And the known passing situation, you got to do a good job protecting the quarterback. Third down and five, and straight ahead, that is Cooley, and hit by Servassier Dennis. He will be short of the first down, four yard run. And three and out go the cards after the interception from Abdullah. I'm a little bit surprised by the call. Like, I get it, you're backed up, you know, and you're worried about this defensive line. You know, that being said, you've got an experienced quarterback, a guy that's played a lot of football, and I'm not a surprise that they would do that without picking up a first down, trying to hit him with a run. Bassett hammers one at Devonshire. MJ from the 43. Starts to the far side. Trying to get the corner turned, and he will end up with nothing on the return. Caught it at the 43 and ran out of bounds into the pit bench at the same yard line, covered by T.J. Quinn. Well, Pat Narduzzi, of course, third winning his coach in pit history, kind of talked about his offense earlier this week. Right now we got a run game going, and I'm just, you know, I love the run game. The clock is ticking, and if you can run it, you know, that's I'll, I'll take that any day. Um, that's what our guys are doing. So it's a it's a good thing. You guys, you know, doom and gloom. Like, what, you know, why can't we throw for 400 yards every weekend? Like, I would rather rush for 400. <laughs> <laughs> when 
letting your quarterbacks make decisions the way <laughs> Slovis did earlier. Maybe that's why you feel that way. Here's a ban of candle on the first down carry. That's a gain of three. Monty Montgomery the stop for Louisville. Tim, I mean, even to the point, they're, they're lining up in run formations in the first couple series, too. There's no doubt about it. Look, it, I, look he's a defensive-minded coach. Every coach wants to be able to run the football. So I think in some ways he's saying, look, we're talking about our personnel here a little bit, too. We right. had Kenny Pickett. Now we've got a band of Canada. Like, we're, we're trying to play to our strengths. And as a defensive-minded head coach, he loves being able to run the football. And I don't think that's unusual. Carter Johnson, a tight end, flexes off the formation. Slovis dropping back. Now going to slip it here to the near side. And this is Karate Mumfield keeping his feet. He'll get a first down. And now Marker's thrown two at a time after Mumfield picked up the first down. So let's see what we have here. Adam Savoie is the referee tonight in the ACC. Illegal block in the back. Offense number eight. Ten yard penalty. Second down. It's on the aforementioned Carter Johnson, the tight end. Yeah, and basically here's Johnson. He's you know trying to fight for Mumfield, and he just that little push there. We've kind of seen two delicate blocks in the back, you know, so far this in this contest, but and Pat Narduzzi doesn't like that any more than he likes throwing the football, I guess, Wes. Second down, 12, yeah. You see the numbers. These two teams have been known to get a flag or two. Now the Panthers spread it out here a little bit. Slovis tries to get it to Mumfield again with some blocking. And he will pick up about three again toward the 46. Momo Sonogo, Kelsey on the stop. Big from him, but guys, not good news right now. Or maybe we'll see if it's good news. Yaya Diaby is on the sidelines, but he did come out of the tent. Hey, right on cue, guys, running in the game right now. He looked like he was okay on the sidelines, and that's definitely big for this team because when I talked to Yaya and when we talked to coaches, they said he is one of the leaders of this offense. Coach Brown said he's done a tremendous job this offseason, taking on even more roles, taking the torch and running. He says success leads to confidence, and he loves the confidence right now that Yaya's playing with. Well, one of the guys I think it's been critical in the last three weeks for this team. Pitt under 40% on third down. That's Wayne on the slant and a first down to the 45 of the Ville. The tackle made by Jarvis Brownlee after a nine yard throw. Yeah, that's a good job by Jared Wayne. Just getting his body inside, catching the football away from his body so they can't get raked out. And it's a good, accurate throw by Slovis. You throw a slant, you want to give the guy two chances to catch it. Once in his hands and once in his body. Jared Wayne does a nice job of catching it with his hands out in front of him. And it's a nice pickup on third and seven. Fresh set of downs at the 45 of the cards. Bartholomew moves in motion. Now Carter will reset. And Abanacanda, no chance. Diaby's back in the game and... Second name tags. And you just see the activity up front for, here's Diaby over here. He's gonna squeeze this inside and basically he just beats the block of Carter as he's trying to have this wind back run come back around for a And the movement up front for Louisville defensively is how they have to kind of hang their hat, make their hay against this offensive line that is a big, strong, physical offensive line with a lot of experience. So now pistol set with a band of Kanda on second and 14 for the Panthers. Slovis slips it to Izzy. Spins away from one. 30, 25, 20, a band of Kanda to the 12. 37 yards to Izzy, a band of Kanda. It's a great example of why if you let him get going, you're going to give up a big play. It's a well-timed screen. And because you don't get them down with the first two players there, Wes, then that speed in the open field is going to make you pay. And that's that's the challenge in defending Israel Abanacanda. So talented. Oh, Travion Cooley going to the Louisville locker room here. 
Boy got off to a good start. Another injury on the offense for Louisville looming. Seventh play of the drive. We got a little Wildcat here. Abana, Kanda, and Carter. Direct snap. Is he trying to break free to the right side? Keeps his feet and scores. You just see it, Wesley. Hey, let's take some of the mystery out of it. Let's just snap him the football and let him run it. Good job of blocking up front. Look, I think they all end up doing a good job getting this level. Watch this finish here. Watch everybody end up just finishing. They, they end up pulling Marcus Miner. And look at his finish to get to the second level. And that's really well done. Josh Minkins obviously can't hold up. And then Abanacanda, if you don't get enough contact on him strong enough to run through the contact into the open field. 13th rushing score of the year for Izzy Abanacanda. Puts Pitt on the board here. Well, we said coming into this game, Abanacanda is one of the stars. Will he deliver? He did a couple of weeks ago against Virginia Tech, doing it tonight against Louisville. So. Well, believe the hype, Tim. 7 yeah. nothing Pittsburgh, right? Israel Abanacanda's 13th rushing score of the year. He's a special player, you know, preparing for this game, getting the chance to watch him. You know, oftentimes backs look like, yeah, you know, this guy's a good back. Sometimes you watch somebody and you think, this guy's pretty special. That's definitely the feeling I got watching the band of Kanda. Sauls will kick it over the top of Jawar Jordan. And a look on the Louisville bench, and that is Amari Huggins Bruce, the number two receiver for the cards this year. 21 catches, a touchdown, 15 yard average, who is uh, not available tonight. Unless it's an emergency. Dressed and on the sideline, but not available according to Louisville. And, you know, because of that and because of the lack of production we've seen from the Louisville receivers, Tyler Hudson's going to have to step up. We mentioned Jalen Carter earlier. Same thing with Braden Smith as well as Marshawn Ford. Here's a give on first down. And that's Jawar Jordan. For Tyler Bentley's tackle after a two yard game. There's Marshawn Ford. He and Tyler Hudson now, without Huggins Bruce in the lineup, have to get center stage in the throw game. Yeah, it relies on them. And what's interesting, we're used to seeing at least one receiver in this Louisville offense with a ton of speed take the top off the coverage. That's just not what you have with Ford at tight end and, and Hudson. And so because of that, you know, that's why we haven't seen as many explosive plays. Cunningham looking for Hudson on cue at the 35 and a first down for the cards. Near the 40 yard line, MJ Devonshire, the tackle for Pitt. Malik Cunningham is not just a runner. This is quarterback play at the highest level. Standing inside the pocket, getting absolutely butt blasted, playing with anticipation. Really, to be honest with you, a hit that maybe He's getting a little too close to the head and neck area of Malik Cunningham. Yeah, that was Tyler Wiltz, the linebacker. Here's Cunningham trying to take off around the edge, and he got flipped over by Marquez Williams. And Cunningham kept his feet and tried to get to the pit bench area. I think Malik thought he might have had a free run here. Hey. Here's what I think happens with Malik Cunningham. You see, that's insanely athletic. He is down. But here's the situation. I think there's an element of you need to take that hit. You make a good play in the passing game. I think he comes to life as a player. Yeah. I think until that happens, he's kind of trying to find his way. But when he starts making plays in the passing game, I think what he does in the run game goes to a whole new level. Another pistol set. Trying to get Jawar Jordan set up to run and maybe a yard to the 39. Stretched it out as far as he could. Kalijah Kansi, number eight in the white, led the charge for Pitt. You can see making yards in the run game, Wes, is going to be hard against this front. Little tempo here, third and nine for the cards, ahead of a minute to play in the first. Cunningham wants to cut it loose, looking deep, and coming back to make the catch is Bell. Cunningham. 
It's a great job by Chris Bell. It's a double move, a little stutter go, and he's running on Brandon Hill. The ball's underthrown, which is nothing wrong with that because when the ball's underthrown, defender can't see it. Who cares what the route is? Put your foot in the ground, go fight through contact to the football. That's a good sign out of the young receiver, Chris Bell. 6 2, 220 from Yazoo City, Mississippi. Here's Cunningham. Got to the edge, and Baldonado took him out of the air. No gain on the play, maybe a loss of one, Kelsey. Yeah, guys, I've got an injury update for you because Travion Cooley is back out of the locker room on the sidelines, but you can tell he's still visibly in a lot of pain. It looks like his right arm area. They just recently put a brace on that arm and elbow area. He was doing some grip things, trying to move it around and see how it feels, but he's been grimacing, and just somebody came up to him a second ago, and he shook his head no, so we'll see if he's good to go. Here's Cunningham, pumps. Now eludes the traffic and heads for the perimeter. And A.J. Woods will angle him out of bounds around the 25-yard line. So Louisville responding to the Abanacanda touchdown. Cunningham a throw to Bell, now a nine-yard run. Cards are in business when quarter two starts. Looking good, and Malik Cunningham looking like he came to play tonight. Did a lot of work in the bye week to get ready, but also approaches today the same way he does every game, guys. Coming into the stadium on his way in, he says he listens to music to get him really hyped up, and then he calms it back down. The thing that is in his headphones when he walks out before he does the captain's meetings, Phil Collins in the air tonight. He told me it is a song that he has listened to ever since he played elementary school basketball. His coach played it before every single game. He said it calmed them down. They never lost a game, and he says he is locked in on Phil Collins. Wow. Low snap. Here's Cunningham starting quarter two. Wide open is Ford. That drum solo maybe paid off, Wes, because he's seen it well. And you mentioned the low snap. He's had to kind of play shortstop back there a little bit so far tonight. And it's hard to play quarterback doing that. But he does a nice job of fielding that football. Finding Marshawn Ford, who just gets lost in the pit secondary. James Turner for the point to tie it. Eight plays, 75 yards, 317 for the Cardinal touchdown. Cunningham's fourth TD pass of the year and the second touchdown catch for Marshawn Ford. And let's take a look at our New York Life drive recap. Here's Tim, a little bit of everything from Louisville. A little bit of everything is right, and then they cap it off. They're going to move Jordan in motion. It's going to make it look like it's a swing screen where they're going to block on the perimeter, but instead Ford bluffs and gets up the field, and the reaction by the defense is so aggressive that Ford just runs through the top of the coverage. You're talking about, you know, creating big plays in the passing game, explosive plays. Well, one of the ways you do it, we've seen a double move out of Louisville. We see a fake screen shot down the field. That has created some big plays, explosive plays, and. I think this, the offense looks a little bit energized. Yeah, no question about it. The quarterback is on point. Rodney Hammond, Vince Davis, deep for Pitt. There'll be no return. Panthers will scrimmage from their 25-yard line. And we have a marker across the way at the 12 as you get a look at Malik Cunningham, who a moment ago threw his 66 touchdown. Pat Narduzzi not happy with. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, receiving team number 37. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Stephon Hall. The guilty party. All the guilty party and Pat Narduzzi. I'd, I'd say he wasn't thrilled with the penalty by Hall. Nothing bothers coaches more than penalties like that. Yep. Especially that, you know, now back the football up inside your own 20. 
Abana Kanda and Carter again with Slovis under center. Off the 12 and a half, Slovis had to get rid of it because Yasir Abdullah was peeling off the edge. Well, as you see why Abdullah necessary to kind of be in this front. Little boot play, Abdullah stays home, doesn't go for it. It's actually a nice job of Slovis. Just getting rid of the football at the feet of one of his receivers to not take a sack. Abdullah was a force in the last regular season meeting between these teams two years ago at what was then Heinz Field. It was a Pittsburgh victory 23 to 20 late September two seasons ago. And now we're going to get a flag. I think this is. Procedure. Start. Yep. Offense number 53. Five yard penalty. Second down. Got a little transition going on the offensive line at Pittsburgh and that's Jake Cradle who starts at center again tonight. For the injured Owen Drexel but here's Keaton Slovis and this is some of the numbers. Tim that are kind of getting out there now a little bit in this campaign. Yeah and here's the deal you mentioned issues on the offensive line Carter Warren out cradles playing center and so guys being shuffled around up front and a quarterback. Well I'm just going to be honest with you he's been hit a lot you go back to that West yeah. Virginia game he was hit quite a bit same thing in that first half of the Tennessee game and it's hard I don't care who you are playing quarterback when you're getting hit is difficult and so under pressure it just hasn't been very good for Slovis. Pittsburgh has just taken a timeout. Second down and 15. A penalty. Slow out of the huddle, and Narduzzi wants to huddle here. Well, homecoming at Cardinal Stadium. Seven all here early in quarter two, and you get the alumni dance team, Lady Bird alumni, during the timeout. I'm not sure that's going to help Kurt Signetti or Frank Signetti Jr. I should say whose brother Kurt is the head coach of James Madison by the way of one of the great football families in the western Pennsylvania market for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Frank Signetti Jr. is thrilled to be coaching at Pitt and you know, tonight I think he's done a good job of you know, getting the running back going. His quarterback has made a bad decision but you know we've seen a lot of shifts in motions trying to confuse the Louisville defense. A ban Canada trying to squeeze through traffic out to about the 13 third down and long coming up Tim you can see though if you don't get him to the ground in those first what three or four strides I said, playing against them you kind of want to hold your breath every time a band of Canada touches the football but I would say this I, to me because Slovis just hasn't seemed to get settled just yet. I think screen, a screen which we saw earlier be effective could be on the table here and They're trying to get organized with the play clock inside 10 I'll tell you it's pretty loud in this building. Yep. Two on the play clock they get it pulled. Slovis shoots it down the field another big catch Wayne producing a first down to the 25 yard line against Quincy Riley. 12 yard throw and catch and a bullet from Slovis in great pass protection. Look at the pocket that Slovis has plenty of room to step into this throw and yet again on a third down throw to Jared Wayne an accurate ball into his body. That's really well done by Keaton Slovis. Second target second catch for Wayne the senior from Scarborough Ontario in Canada. That's Vincent Davis in the orbit. Slovis will get it to him in space. 30 and big lick. Dorian Jones at six foot and 235 took Vincent Davis out of the air. And this is a really well timed play call by Frank Signetti Jr. because you know they end up throwing that little swing that wide screen you know blocks on the perimeter basically like a toss sweep west to get to the perimeter mm. but they did it into the teeth of a blitz and so a lot of space to work on the on the edge right at 10 and another first down here for Pitt. <laughs> Slovis now eight of 10 and over 100 yards. A Banacanda. And the Cardinals rally to the football with Jarvis Brownlee. 
Remember it was Brownlee that closed the show in Orlando in the early season victory against UCF with the interception on just a terrific play at the end of that ball game. And Brownlee you know, he's just he's been good in terms of depth and competition in the secondary and you know between Clark and Chandler Jones and Brownlee you know, having guys that have experience I think made Scott Satterfield feel relatively good about his corner play. Look at the split back set and the gun is Slovis and a band of can can't turn the corner. Yaya Diaby takes him down for a loss of three on the play. And Yaya Diaby just the quickness off the football. He's right here. Just look at the quickness to split the defense to get inside. You see the movement. You know he's kind of slanting inside to his left and just because of that quickness kind of getting small even at 6'4 270. He's playing in the pit backfield and then the Banacanda can't get going. Seventh play of the drive is third and the full 10 for the Panthers. Slovis with time, a Banacanda and a great play. Well, no, he breaks away. How about that? It looked like Keytrail Clark had him dead to rights. And Izzy slips away from that, and then Josh Minkins. He's short, but this isn't a, a remarkable play. That's why I was talking about him being a complete back. He's not down. That's incredible balance. That's good running, hand on the ground. And for a guy with a lot of speed, that's an impressive play in the open field. I know they don't pick up the first down, but you can see how dangerous he is. And fortunately for Keytrail Clark, he had reinforcements following him. Here is Cam Guess, who won the punting job this week. His first collegiate punt toward Braden Smith will hit at the 26 and skip out of bounds. Seven all our score. Heck of a ball game tonight in Derby City. On a confrontation. Turnovers, Blue Devils trailed early when going away 45-21. West 45 against Miami. Yeah. Tell you something about the Blue Devils and obviously Wake Forest rolling. That's a good football team Wake is. There's no doubt about it. Sam Hartman, great, great day and then. Terrific game. That was a great game. How do you feel about Syracuse now? I do, it, nothing changes. I still think they're a terrific team. And I'm, you know what? You look at what they did defensively. They made Uwe Ungalale uncomfortable. But here's the deal in the Atlantic. Look, Louisville needs a win. No question, right? They've got to find a way to chase some of those one loss teams. Wake Forest, by the way, here at Louisville next Saturday on ACC Network, right before Tim and Kelsey and Dave will be in Chapel Hill for Pitt in Carolina, and a deep ball is thrown beyond the reach of Jalen Carter. I love the play call, though. First down shot, move the pocket, you know, off of a run action, which is something that it's looked like you've tried to commit to do, and, you know, he's trying to throw this post to Carter across the field. And, he nearly gives him a chance. It just looked like he kind of didn't get his feet around underneath him. Ball came out of his hand. You know, a little awkward, but I like the fact that they're taking a shot on an early down. Second down and 10, and Jawar Jordan brought down by Tyler Wiltz. Wiltz has uh, found his way to some more playing time. And he is slow to get up after making the play. And one of the cards also slow. That is uh, Luke Kandra who checked in and they want him down. That stops the clock and allows everybody to. He gets rolled up oh, on yeah. at the end there and Ooh. I, I seeing it live. It didn't look good. It was good to see him get to his feet and try to get off under his own power. I think he probably could have made it to the sideline from what it looked like. Maybe they told him that to get down so Adonis Boone could, you know. Yep, so they're going to check on Kandra. We're going to step aside. Seven all here in the second period of play. Luke Kandra able to get off the field under his own power. The big sophomore from Elder High School in Cincinnati, same place it produced the former Cardinal Eric Wood. By the way, we saw a bunch of former Cardinals on the field before the game, including the Legendary quarterback Chris Redmond, Tim. That's exactly right. Yeah. Third and long here for Cunningham and the cards. 
Throw to the far side and incomplete. A.J. Woods on the coverage of Tyler Hudson. Just an inaccurate throw by Malik Cunningham. He's kind of patting his chest. He, he knew it was on him, and he just misses this ball inside. It's basically a stop route. Balls come out and just leaves it inside. He puts that ball on his left shoulder. It's probably a catch, and Cunningham knows he's just off target. Second time the cards have gone three and out in four possessions. And Bassett to punt it away to MJ Devonshire. Wobbly punt, not particularly good. And it will roll out of bounds around the Pittsburgh 42. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified October 23rd through the 30th as ACC Unity Week. As part of the initiative, members of the Pitt and Louisville football teams joined one another on the field before tonight's kickoff to demonstrate their commitment to seeing each other as equals and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times, recognizing that our differences don't divide us but make us stronger. You'll see this around the ACC footprint at every sporting event the conference has through the end of next week. Wildcat here for Pitt. They start off its 40. And here is Rodney Hammond for the first time since opening night against West Virginia for a yard, maybe two. And West, didn't you get the sense that the coaches were excited that, that Hammond was back available? Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously we're talking about a band of Kanda. He's a great player, but felt like Hammond was mentioned quite a bit, the fact that you know, he's off to a good start to the season, and they're happy to have him back available to yeah. be in the lineup. 500 yards a year ago, seven touchdowns for Rodney Hammond from Norfolk, Virginia. And he'll keep it again. Fires through midfield, Hammond 45-40, and into Louisville territory to the 30-yard line. M.J. Griffin, another tackle deep in the secondary on a 29-yard run by Hammond. Yeah, and basically, he's playing quarterback, and it's a, re a zone read. He's going to read it. If the defense squeezes down, he's going to keep it on the outside. That's what happens. Ball in the belly of the back. You got an escort blocker in Carter. And now instead of a quarterback running the zone read, you've got a 5'9", 200-pound accomplished back with the ball in his hands. So Slovis checks out wide here to the right, and Pitt stays in the Wildcat with Hammond handing to Izzy Abanacanda, who drives it for eight, almost nine yards on first down. Yeah, and this is feeling like the Miami Dolphins, you know, against the New England Patriots right now. You know, basically say, look, we're, we're going to line up with two running backs in the backfield. We have a coach that loves running the football, and we're going to jam it down your throat. Is that Ronnie Brown out there? Who wow. we got out there? Well, I was getting ready to say, are you, how far back you want to go, Ronnie Brown, or you want to go Larry Zonka, Jim Kick? I, was, I just wanted to check here. <laughs> at some point, they're going to stop covering Keaton Slovis at the bottom of the screen. Yep. Hammond again will keep and have the first down spinning to the 18 as Sonogo the tackle after a four yard run by Rodney Hammond. Now when you see the sophomore here remember this he had multiple touchdowns a year ago among his seven for the Panthers but Rodney Hammond's biggest issue Tim has been health. It's been staying healthy a year ago and now even in this uh, sophomore season, and Gavin Bartholomew shaking up on the play, the big tight end from Blue Mountain in Western PA. This would be a significant injury. I, I really like Gavin Bartholomew. I mean, he, he only had 14 catches coming into this game. Saw him with a catch earlier, but to me, he's such a big target. He, he plays with great athleticism. You think back to the play he makes against Tennessee, yeah. running down the field, hurdling the defender, and you know, and you see him here, he's just trying to kind of, you know, block down and, and finish in this block. It's just hard to tell what happened, but something. Did Zabovic clip him as he went by? Yeah. 68, the guard? And you see him kind of jogging off the field, which is a good sign for Pitt offensively. He's pretty good in the run game. I think he's a really nice player. Hmm. And. You know, Frank Signetti's done a good job throughout his career of getting tight ends involved in the passing game, and 
I would expect his role to continue to grow. Slovis again comes wide to the right. Daniel Carter's in a slot with Jared Wayne. And you got Hammond and Abanacanda in the Wildcat. And here is Hammond keeping it and running right into the arms of Dorian Jones. And they're saying a fumble. Did Hammond fumble it? Louisville says he did. No signal from the official yet. And the ball will stay at the Louisville end of the field at the 18. Well, Wes, one of the interesting things is that the, the ball handling for backs is very different. You know, to, if you're going to run these zone read type plays, this Wildcats type stuff, because he's not used to doing it. And, you know, while Hammond tucks that football, it's hard to tell with his back to us, it's but out. it's out. It certainly in the reaction, you know, from Louisville defensively felt like that football was Louisville, out. Their first 30 seconds. Bob Welch is the replay official. So we just showed you one version of it. Tim. To me, Wes, it looks like this ball is loose and on its way out. Time out in the bill. Well, Pat Narduzzi looks on because his team's staring their second turnover in the face here on a potential fumble by Rodney Hammond in the red zone, Tim. Yeah, and, you know, getting the looks at it. I mean, the ball is clearly out because of where we see it, but I, I, we think that it's Rieger's helmet right there that knocks the football out. To me, I think we see the ball, you know, pass through Hammond's lap, and now it's going to be at the feet of Hammond to the right of our screen. Just to, it's tricky to pick up the ball on its way out, but Hellman hits it, the ball's out, and then as we look at it here, when he's down, you know, the ball's out over there. Not After close review, to Hammond. The ball carrier fumbled the ball, which was recovered by the defense at the 18 yard line. It'll be Louisville ball, first down at that spot. Louisville is not charged with its first timeout. That's a good bit of coaching by Scott Satterfield sure calling is. the timeout because he, you know, he saw the reaction of his defense. Maybe he had an angle of it, but you know, sometimes you just don't know. You know, I mean, it, Pitt clearly was acting like they were still playing offense, and it, I mean, look at it. He saw it, knew it right away. In fact, he's telling them to look up at the big screen, and that's well done by Scott Satterfield and. Another big turnover as this defense is trying not to break in their own end. Here's Cunningham on the keep. Malik down the near sideline. And out of bounds in pick territory. A.J. Woods was the last stand. Or else Malik Cunningham was going to run a long way for the lead. When he gets going and when he feels like he's in the flow of the game, he is so hard to defend. It's a designed quarterback run, basically, you know, quarterback counter. The 48-yard line, first down. And, you know, they're going to say that he stepped out of bounds. Wow. You know, early in that run. Hey, look, either way, when, you, when he gets going, you know, you have to defend the pass. We've seen that, and he just so much speed kind of runs himself out of bounds. But... Great camera work tonight by our crew. And you see the 30 yard plays and the 40 yard plays. Not many and that's the one thing Scott Satterfield told us almost off the top yesterday. He needs to, and he needs to try to find him in the passing game. You know I don't know that he's as, as concerned about it coming with you know Cunningham you know taking off and running on a scramble or having a design run. You know, looking for those explosives in the passing game has been a challenge. Four on the play clock. Cunningham's got to get it snapped. They do. Handles another low shot. And here's the throw on the perimeter. And Braden Smith the catch. A.J. Woods there on a seven-yard connection. Now, one thing I will say, big run. I think they, they didn't feel like he was out of bounds. There was some confusion. This is, I think, where we see the growth maturity of Cunningham. OK, hey, look, they marked you out of bounds further back. Settle now. Yep. You just picked up the first down. Make sure you get the playoff. Make sure you stay on schedule as an offense. 
Now, I'm not sure he would have kind of had that awareness earlier in his career. Jalen Mitchell, who missed the last four games, has come in for the first time tonight. Tim is one of the running backs here for the Ville. Behind Cunningham and the pistol. And Malik will keep it. Wow. That is Servassier Malik Dennis with keeper. Brandon Hill taking Cunningham down after a two-yard run in front of the Cardinals bench. Yeah, look, as, as good as Cunningham is, you know, I, I do think that you know, he's a guy that you, you want to eliminate the number of hits. Yes, you're going to use him as a runner. Yes, he's going to be a, a you know, a scrambler for you, but you know, trying to avoid unnecessary hits. So Cunningham and Dennis in the collision. Now remember, staff has stopped the game. three weeks ago Injury at Boston College, Cunningham was involved in a targeting play. He missed the remainder of the BC game and then did not play a week later at Virginia. Louisville had the bye, and now here he is with another heavy collision. Listen, it's a heavy collision, and, and here's what's really tricky. I mean, I looking at the play, now obviously he's a runner. He's not a defenseless player on that previous play. He's a runner. So the only targeting that you could have in that environment is from the crown of the helmet of the defender. Right. Which, you know, as we look at it, is a minimum close. You know, I don't believe it's targeting from Brandon Hill, but it's cl it's close if we're talking about top of the you know top of the helmet. Well, now, because they stopped the game hmm. to look at Cunningham in this era of being sensitive about it, now he has to leave the game, and he's kind of putting up a bit of a fight. It looks like in terms of saying, "Hey, yep. I'm fine. Leave me out there." Here is Brock Dolman into the game. Remember, he quarterbacked the win at Virginia. And he'll hand to Jalen Mitchell, who tries to bounce off one or two. And I think he's got enough for the first down before Tyler Wiltz makes the stop at the 41 of the Panthers. We'll see what Doman did against the Cavaliers. Remember, they trailed double figures and came back to win the game. And Lance Taylor said the first three possessions were just brutal. Look, it was a bad start, and I think that he was worried about how it was going to play out, but kind of stuck with it, fought, fought through the adversity, and it's kind of the story of his playing career, to be honest with you, looking for opportunities and, you know, was able to deliver when it mattered. First and 10, back foot, looking, got to get rid of it, throws, and it's caught. Tyler Hudson, another catch over in front of the pit bench against MJ Devonshire. Well, and Hudson does a good job of being strong at the moment of truth. It's a good job of but Brock Doman uh, standing in there, scanning down the field and delivering a good, accurate throw. Seven-yard throw. Cunningham has gone into the tent at the Louisville bench area for further observation. And let me just be real clear on Cunningham being in the tent. That's the right thing in today's world of a guy coming off a concussion, being evaluated. And that ball will be thrown out of bounds. Dennis and Cansey were forcing the issue with Doman. And when eight in the white is coming after you, you know it. Look, he's a really disruptive player. Plays, it, you know, in the opposing team's backfield quite a bit. It's a good group. Cansey, to me, is kind of the standalone talent in the group. And... You know, at third and three, staying on schedule at this point in the field would not surprise me if Scott Satterfield felt like this was two down territory. Mitchell stays in the ball game. He's the running back. Remember now, Cooley's shaking up earlier. They do play Jordan a little bit, but good to have Jalen Mitchell back on the field for the first time in five games. Little slip pass and off the hands of Mitchell. I think Dennis got a hand on it along the way toward Jalen Mitchell. That's a good example of a quarterback that is, you know, he's new to the lineup. He's late. He's working the stick to his right. Doesn't like it. Come back, find Mitchell the back. But because he's that split second late, Savasie Dennis is driving on the football and incomplete. And Malik Cunningham, obviously, out of the medical tent. Medical evaluators deemed him good enough to come back in. So Cunningham in the pistol with Mitchell. Fourth down for Louisville in a tie game. Cunningham shoots it. 
And incomplete. Was trying to get it to Braden Smith. It was Marquez Williams and also Eric Hallett that were in cover for Pitt. Yeah, and I, I would have liked to see the receiver come back to the football a little bit better than this because you know, sitting back there and waiting on the football, which is what Braden Smith is doing, rather than coming right back to his quarterback, they would make a make a play on that football and Oh, that just seemed a little crazy to me. I, I know I mentioned it was four down territory. I understand that Malik was back. It's part of me that thinks if that's the play you're going to run, I maybe leave Doman in the game. If I'm going to run the quarterback, maybe I'm fine with running Malik back out there. And on the first down snap, another carry for Abana Kanda who picks up right at about four so it'll be second down and six hey Louisville had all three timeouts you were in two down territories you said a moment ago prior to the third Tim. and I it felt frantic is he slices off about five more it'll be third and about two Sonogo the transfer from Ole Miss who's had an incredibly positive impact since coming over in the portal here's third and short now remember Pitt gets the ball to Start the second half, and Abana Kanda leans. If he cracks the 44, it's enough for the first down. And I believe that that he does get it. And it's a critical drive here for Louisville defensively. Obviously, they've come up with a couple of key turnovers if they've been defending their red zone. And Diaby is shaking up on the play. He's going to come out. Mason Rieger, who helped force the fumble with Dorian Jones. Checks back in and Diaby now to all fours. This guy has been shaken up a couple different times tonight and he's been terrific on the field for well, the been, Cardinals. I mean, and coming into tonight, five sacks on the season, seven tackles for loss, and really when he started playing here at Louisville was was you know an undersized yep, guy sure playing was. in the front, but as you see him here, you know, obviously he's gotten much bigger and stronger. He's always played with great effort and, and speed. Had a big impact on the game so far. Yeah, guys, I actually talked to him about that right there this week when I spoke with Yaya about the transformation. He said it really started going from high school to junior college. He said since high school he's dropped 50, he's gained rather 50 pounds and that's all muscle mass. He's down from 20% body fat to 10% body fat. Wow. And he said he has worked really, really hard in the off season. It's something his coaches echoed too. I asked him what motivates him and he says by far what motivates him the most is his teammates knowing we have each other's back and don't focus on the outsiders. We focus on what we have in this locker room. Great to see him walking off. We'll see how he is. Kelsey, he played in a terrific high school program, North Clayton, south of Atlanta, and then went to Georgia Military College. He's come here and been a force. And then has just gotten a lot better. Speaks to the player development Scott Satterfield's got. And there's more player development because that's a play behind the line by Galati. But again, so no go in Galati. West behind the line. That's the key. I mean, we, we've said it when. When Abana Kanda gets going, he's hard to stop. But playing on that side of the line of scrimmage, it's hard to get going. Slovis on a play fake. Keaton hit as he throws and tried to get it to Bartholomew. And he got covered up by Minkins, the strong safety. And Slovis gets absolutely blasted here by Yashir, Yashir Abdullah. And then in good job of Minkins, who's got good length at six foot two. Fighting against the six foot five Bartholomew. Pitt huddling for third in the full 10. Louisville with a line change. Diaby back on the field. Slovis is 9 of 12 after the incomplete ball a moment ago. Looks, throws. That was offline for Wayne, and a flag has been thrown. In the neighborhood. Of roughing the Personal passer. Foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 22. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So they're moving the pocket. They're rolling Slovis to the right. And yeah, see that? Look, that, this isn't roughing the passer. It's got to be forcible contact to the head and neck area. I get it. He, he touches his head. That's not forcible contact. West, plain and simple, it's not. Yep. 
It's got to be forcible contact. I, I mean, I'm all for pick, protecting the quarterback. Played the position, all that, but that's not that's not roughing. A Banacanda clips off eight, nine, and almost ten on first down before Minkins gets the tackle. Here's the deal. I, I don't want to belabor this, but that's the first penalty of the night for Louisville. They've been clean. Pitt has been not. It's been a difference in the game. That extends a drive. And the Panthers now with a Banacanda. He gets the first down. And the clock will stop briefly to move the chains inside 90 seconds. And now Narduzzi's team in a tie game. Tim is looking at a double dip. Score here and then get the ball to start second half. There's no doubt about it, which is why that penalty looms large. And the Louisville defense going to have to find a way to come up with a stop. Slovis hit as he throws, sails it to the end zone. It's intercepted. Picked off by MJ Griffin. Trying to get a block and knocked out of bounds. Right around the 27, 28 yard line. Slovis got hit by Perry as he cut it loose. Well, I think the saying is ball don't lie. I think that probably applies here, Wes. Look, he's, Slovis is under pressure and this is another horrible decision. There's pressure coming off the bottom of the screen here. Because of that, the inside pressure is going to get to Slovis, and he just has absolutely no business heaving this up down the field. I'm not sure who he even was throwing that football to. And another really bad turnover, MJ Griffin standing back there like he was fielding a punt. And he gets the belt. Second interception of the year for Griffin. And now all of a sudden with 65 seconds left and three timeouts. I, I'm going to say this. The two interceptions have been so bad. I'm not sure Slovis stays in the game. Ball incomplete toward Cooley. That's Travion Cooley who Kelsey reported on the injury to the right arm and you can see it's all bound up and Travion Cooley back in that ball game trying to give it a go for the cards and we stole a moment of Keaton Slovis who was in conversation there with Nick Patty. Yeah, look I don't know what the leash is but I'm just saying like the two interceptions that we've seen have been about as bad as you can possibly be in terms of turning the football over. Minute to go second and the ten ripped in the middle of the field that's Hudson on the catch out near the forty five. Brandon Hill the pushback for the Panthers after a fifteen yard play. Scott Satterfield's got all three timeouts in under a minute. Cunningham again going to slip it back and off the hands of Travion Cooley. And this was almost a remarkable play by Cunningham. Everyone's so afraid of him running. That is the pursuit chases him to the right and he throws this back. Cooley may hit his head on the goalpost Wes. Yep. I mean, at a minimum, he's going to have an opportunity in the open field against Brandon Hill. And he knew it. But look, you mentioned it, Wes. Three timeouts, 41 seconds. You, look, you got plenty of time here. Yeah. and But you do need to start thinking about using your timeouts when you get a chunk play. Yep. Cunningham wants to look and throw. Now, here comes the pressure from Pitt. Malik going to put it up for grabs at the Panther bench, and now all of a sudden the Panthers have worked, or Cardinals have worked their way to third and ten. Haba Baldonado, along with Deslin Alexander, on the pressure of Cunningham that time. To me, on third and ten in this environment, with how it's gone at receiver, You know, it's surprising for me to not see Ford on the field because he's the guy I would want working in the middle of the field. And with that being the case, Tyler Hudson may be the guy. Jordan has come into the ball game to spell cooling. Cunningham trying to direct the offense and his receivers now backs up and will throw it away at the bench with 23 seconds left. Baldonado again. The fifth year senior from Italy who played his high school football in Florida was in high speed pursuit of Cunningham. And you can see how, you know, 
different characters on that front for Pitt defensively. And Baldonado, you mentioned it. He's one of these guys that's played hard for a long time for this Pitt program. And whether it's David Green or Elijah Cansey, they just do a good job of disrupting the quarterback's rhythm. Bassett hammers it at Devonshire, who plays inside the 10. And MJ Devonshire will go out of bounds at the 9. Well, it's a 7-7 game, but Pitt is losing the turnover game, Tim. Well, and it's just been really poor decisions by Keaton Slovis on two of them. Obviously, they had the fumble by Hammond. But, you know, is kind of were hovering around the 30-yard line, threatening the score, certainly in field goal range. Keaton Slovis, who, you know, the coaches kind of just have said, look, he just needs game reps. You know, we, we think that he's a an accurate passer. We think he's a good decision maker. The best is ahead of him. You know, they would hope that's the case because he's made two terrible decisions that have led to turnovers. And you see a touch of the knee by the Panthers. And off we go to halftime because Pitt gets the ball to start second half and down three in the turnover game. I bet Pat Narduzzi feels fortunate. He should because yeah. He's in a tie ball game and he's going to get the ball to start the half. He's going to be able to lay into his team in the locker room. Basically say, look, we, we couldn't do it. We could have Panthers tied at seven. Malik Cunningham. Stars have been the story in the first half in terms of percentage. West Durham, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs in a moment. Abana Kanda's delivered. Malik Cunningham's delivered. The, the stars have been the story. The other story is not protecting the football. I mean, that's really why we have a, a tie ball game is because when Pitts crossed midfield, they decided to turn it over. That's something they've got to get figured out. Well, a moment ago, Kelsey spoke with Pat Narduzzi. Coach, some turnovers in the first half that I know you'd like to clean up, but it's a tied ball game. What was your message to the team? Message is we've got to play better pit football. That's what we do. I mean, it's a 7-7 ball game. Our defense has played really good. Gave up one bubble go, um, you know, Taylor Callett, which he usually doesn't do that. Giving up seven points. We just can't turn the ball over in the red zone or cross the 50 three times over there. we got to hold on to the ball. If we protect the ball, we should be okay in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Good luck. All right. No surprise, the turnovers were at the top of the list in the pit locker room and Keaton Slovis 9 of 13 and a buck 12 and a Banacanda trying to slip through gets a yard that'll be the 17th carry of the night for the ACC's leading rusher and number five nationally is the Banacanda and 74 yards total a little tempo here by the Panthers too Tim which I'm not surprised by just to kind of get things going and get the back going because Louisville has done a nice job, I think, you know, kind of, if not for a, a few big runs early, very early in this game, they've kind of done a pretty good job in the run game. Ashton Galati, the stop of a Benacanda. So now all of a sudden, a team that in the first half was just three or four on third down. Pitt was seven of its last 26 going to the bye week on third down and not many attempts here in this first half. Bump means who we didn't see much in the first half and the boundary to the left is one of the wide receivers. And you see the field now with Kanate Mumfield and Jared Wayne. Slovis tried to go to Mumfield. He got batted down at the line of scrimmage and I think Diaby got a hand on it. It was Diaby West. He just does a nice job with his bull rush. He, here's Diaby he gets inside and when he kind of is reading the quarterback sees him getting ready to throw this football gets that right hand up. It's a pretty good bull rush gets an edge and. You know, Zubovic just doesn't do a good enough job anchoring down on him and Diaby makes yet another play. Yep. Cam Guess will punt it away. Braden Smith signals four and makes the fair catch near the 32. And that's where Cunningham and the Cardinals get started, Tim. Yeah, listen, Cunningham, I felt like after taking a shot in the passing game, really started to make plays, just kind of settled into the game. You know, pulled the one down, took off for a scramble, down for it for the touchdown, had a designed quarterback run out of empty that was a big play. And, you know, he did receive that big hit. And I think there was some question of, you know, when he got up, took his helmet off was evaluated wow. and 
you know, back in the football game. Doman is going to take the snaps here to start the second half. And the first down give is Cooley. And Bengali Kamara makes the stop for Pitt. And look, I, I think that it's important to just kind of understand the situation, the environment. Malik Cunningham, who does have his helmet on, you know, you almost just kind of you wonder. I mean, a concussion is either you're you're able to play or you're not. Right. So we certainly wouldn't want to speculate on that. I wouldn't have his helmet, I want to believe, if that were the issue. Here is Cooley again. Remember, he went out and left the field injured. John Morgan makes the stop on Travion Cooley. And it'll be third down. And Brock Dolman. And look like they got John Morgan into the neutral zone here. Or Cansey, eight rather, not six Morgan. Adam Savai is our offside defense number eight five yard penalty results in a first down. Yeah, it's just the the clap you know been doing it all night and can't see getting eager on third down jumps a good job of moving by the offensive line if trying to draw the defense off sides which ultimately worked. So this young man from Colorado Springs well traveled Brock Dolman is uh, Handling the quarterback chores here on this opening possession for Louisville. A couple of changes here. Isaac Martin's coming to the ball game to join this pistol set with Cooley. First and ten after the penalty. And here's Cooley shredding into the secondary. Crosses the 45 into the 43 of Pitt before Javon McIntyre makes the stop. 16-yard run for Travion Cooley. And inside runs were what they wanted to do. And watch the job by Isaac Martin here. Just a lead play. He's going to end up leading up on Kamara. And, and, and Cooley does a really good job of just kind of sifting through it and then getting upfield, kind of winding it backside. Kelsey Riggs on the field, of course, for us tonight, working to try and find out if there's any clarity on Cunningham, coach's decision, or what have you? Cooley is checked out wide to the right. And a play fake Doman. Sets, wants to shoot it for Ford, and almost intercepted by the linebacker, Savassier Dennis. It's really kind of an interesting play, kind of a trick play, to be honest with you. They're trying to fake the quarterback drop. Watch what happens here. Marshawn Ford's in the backfield, and he's going to act like he's leading up, blocking on this linebacker and run down the field. You're going to have a fake quarterback draw, and then Doman's going to drop back a bit after that. Try to hit it. But Savassier Dennis, who's mm. a really good football player and has great instincts, does not fall for it. And somewhat of a dangerous throw by Doman to even attempt it. Looking for the throw on the perimeter. Now we'll try and run with it and got a couple of the 41. So third and eight will be the next snap for the cards. And Jordan is going to check in the ball game to replace Cooley. Ford is on the field this time. Louisville tonight on third downs, three for eight. Play clock inside of 10, and Cards trying to get the play communicated. Pitt trying to get set here. Play clock at two. Blitz coming. Dennis got him. Servassier Dennis. It's a loss of 13. And the senior from Syracuse, New York, records his fifth sack of the year. And Gerard Jordan, he ends up coming out here. And what happens is, Savassier Dennis is coming inside. You need to protect inside out and blitz protection. And Jawar Jordan needs to take the inside guy, not the outside guy. Quickest pass to the quarterback is with the inside guy. And Savassier Dennis, also somebody that you need to know where that he is at all times. Bassett flips it end over end toward Devonshire, who juggles it inside the 10 and fumbled it. And the ball was loose. And what happened here? We've got a 
Measurement at the forward progress was back at the three. Hey, but Wes, I'm not sure he's got possession of the football at the three yard line. If that ball comes out and then he repossesses it. We caught it on the bounce. So he does he does regather that football at about the three yard line. But is it clean? Is he possessing it? Seems that he is. Wow. Partisan's not happy. We may have another look at this when we come back. Road taking on Miami. Tyler Van Dyke went out with injury. Insert Jake Garcia. And this is Brandon Johnson. He plays for the other team. You don't want that. One of eight Miami turnovers. Duke rolls. Back to my guys, Wes and Tim. All right, JC. By the way, Riley Leonard accounting for four touchdowns and nearly 200 yards of total offense. Carter Johnson in front of Izzy Abanacanda. Pitt, after all of that, starts off its three. And Abanacanda will double that, maybe add a yard toward the seven. Abdullah the stop. But the story here of this hour and this third quarter, Kelsey, is the status of Malik Cunningham. Well, it seems like it's good news because we just got word from the staff that he is good to go. I saw Malik Cunningham and offensive coordinator Lance Taylor talking. He walked up to Malik and Malik said, I'm good. They dapped each other up. Malik sat down on the bench and the headset was immediately brought over to him as Brock Doman was coming off the field. So he's been talking with the offense this whole time. It looks like he's good to go. We'll see what happens next series. That's 80 percent of Louisville's first half offense sitting over there in an offensive huddle. And here is a Banacanda trying to jumpstart a pit team that, Tim, it's been its own worst enemy in many respects. Been its own worst enemy because you know, few of the errors just have seemed to be unforced errors, Wes, and you know, Louisville's taking advantage of them. I would expect to see a heavy dose of this run game, bringing big people in and just trying to pound the football. You know, we heard Pat and our doozy sound from earlier in the week about wanting to be able to run the football. And so I think it was one of the reasons we're going to see a Wildcat once again. Abana Kanda with Carter Johnson, the 250 pound tight end. Bumped into Johnson and never got started. Louisville filled it with Benjamin Perry, who's been really productive. 15 tackles last four ball games for the Redshirt freshman. It's a great call by you. Perry basically said, look, I'm going to meet the blocker on his side of the line of scrimmage and you know, not, not let a band of can to get going. All right, so we got Cunningham warming up. This uh, third quarter plot thickens a little bit. Just an interesting when I mean, we saw Doman being attended to by the trainers on the bench area too. Slovis a little play fake. Tried to slip it on the perimeter. Louisville fighting through. Brian Brown's defense has started to sort out what the Panthers are doing in small spaces. Chandler Jones was there to make the stop. This is well done. Yeah, Slovis just trying to throw a little inside wide receiver screen. Doesn't have a lane. Actually does the right thing of, you know, not just trying to throw it through people. Eventually finds a lane, but at that point, the timing of the play is all disruptive, disrupted in. Louisville's defense is seems to be playing with a different type of confidence Wes. Yep. third and a dozen now for Pitt. Slovis straight drop shoots it down the field looking for Kanate Mumfield and incomplete. I thought this was a bit of a force to Mumfield, who had a, a lot of red jerseys running with him, especially when Gavin Bartholomew was running a shallow cross kind of right into his scope of vision. I think there's a chance Bartholomew would have ended up running for the first down. To me, Keaton Slovis just right now is not seeing it well. And that, that happens sometimes to quarterbacks where you're just not seeing it clearly, and it feels like that's the case with Slovis. Cam Guess hangs it high toward Braden Smith near the midfield line. A fair catch call for it to Louisville 48. Still locked up at seven, and when we come back, the Cardinals showstopper returns. Seven all, we play on here in quarter three at Cardinals Stadium. It's been a huge weekend. Here in Derby City, I mean, last night at Louisville Slugger Field, 
Louisville Live took center stage, if you will. 10,000 fans plus greeted Kenny Payne and the men's team, Jeff Walls and the women's team. There's the great Jack Harlow. A lot of excitement about both these hoops programs. Louisville's women are the preseason favorite in the ACC, and you're going to be able to see Kenny Payne in there in his debut as the head coach of the Cards right here on ACC Networks. And then, how about tonight? You and I are down on the field. Rajon Rondo's here, a Louisville native. Something tells me he'd have been a really nice football player, too. And Jack, well, Jack Harlow's here tonight, too, Kelsey. Here's Cunningham on first down, and A.J. Woods pulls it out of there. Panthers get the first Cardinal turnover of the night with Woods on the interception on first down. You know, best field position of the game for Louisville, and it just ends up getting wasted. Underthrown ball by Malik Cunningham, and look, he's trying to push the ball down, down the middle of the field here, and Cunningham just under, underthrows it. And like he, Just inside, he's kind of soft with the football. The corner is midlining it, and... You know, if you're going to throw that football, you've got to drive it right away. And, and a 28-yard return into plus territory at the Cards 47. First interception of the year for A.J. Woods. The ninth, or reg pardon, the sixth by Pittsburgh defense. And this is a Banacanda. And, boy, the red shirts are there in a hurry. Galati is been a threat off the edge. Sophomore from Boca Raton. Unless I've been impressed with this defensive line for Louisville, you yes. know, in their front in general, because, you know, you see Abdullah has made a lot of plays, obviously. Diaby, we've said his name a bunch. Same thing with Galati, who you just mentioned. And, you know, this Pitt offensive line, it, it's a good, experienced group. And they've done a good job pretty much all season, but Louisville giving them fits. See the two tight ends move. That's Mumfield in motion. Slovis from under center. Play fake pressure coming. Tries to get rid of it. Nice one hand catch, Johnson. He'll round the corner and be close to a first down. That's the 250 pound junior tight end, Carter Johnson. It's a heck of a catch. It's a heck of a catch. They, they slide Johnson out from the other side, and that's a good job of Slovis stopping, giving ground to allow himself some time to get that throw off. And nice play, obviously, by Johnson. It's kind of interesting. Slovis has made some of the harder plays tonight and kind of airmailed some of the easier ones. So first and 10, it will be at the 37. And have a stoppage of play. Referee Savoie. Previous play is under further review. Now. Uh, they got to be looking to see if this was indeed a first down. I mean. So, how about another look? Short it might to me, be West. short. Might be short. Well, they reviewed it, determined he was short by a yard, so it's third and one at the 38 for Pitt. And a Banacanda will get to the line, I think. Momo Sonogo the stop. It looks like the head linesman standing on the 37 across the way. I haven't seen him signal yet, right. Wes, have you? Looks like they're moving him now and was yep. right at it. And so really Banacanda got the yardage. Or Davis. It was Vin no, it was a band of Canada, and now Vincent Davis has checked in. Is he lost the hat? Got to come out for a snap. You see Bartholomew and Mumfield. Now Rodney Hammond in the backfield. Here with Slovis. They'll hand it to Hammond. And boy, look at the turn Rodney Hammond gives you. I mean, the power that Hammond runs with is different. And he gets up limping a little bit. You see the really wide splits by Pitt. You see other schools do it. Georgia Tech's been doing that a lot. Did a lot last year. Tennessee is making a living out of doing it with these wide splits. Get the 
defense is spread out, react to those wide splits, then try to, you know, hammer a power back inside against the light box. And Sideline warning on Louisville is coming, in, or an infraction on Louisville. Sideline warning, Louisville, their first warning. Most important guy in college football is the get back coach. I, and I think maybe that conversation at the end of the half, Scott Satterfield was having with the officials. Right. Maybe he got their attention. Mm. Second down and six. Davis shoots through the left side. And Vincent Davis to the 25 and a pit first down. Now, Davis is a little bit different than a Banacanda. And Hammond, Tim. Yeah, he is, but he's a really good back. And Marcus Miner does a good job of getting up to the second level on Momo Sonogo. And Davis, who really has had a, a pretty good year so far. Poor Pitt obviously doesn't touch the ball as much as a Banacanda, but he's more than a capable back. Gavin Thompson, the wide receiver, to the bottom of the screen here with Vincent Davis. Abana Candace in the backfield with Slovis. Cardinals trying to press. Slovis tried to flip it to Bartholomew, and that got batted down. Yasir Abdullah, another play. This is just really a lot, a lot of pressure coming. Basically, they're bringing a lot of pressure. These guys in here, and then it's Abdullah on the edge as they're trying to sneak the tight end out into the flat. And Bartholomew is going to be wide open, but it's Abdullah's athleticism and length. That prevents Slovis from being able to find him. You might need a couple sheets of paper tonight for the impact plays that Abdullah and Diaby have provided for Louisville. Second in the full 10. Slovis makes a quick throw. This is Davis trying to find the seam and inside the 20 dives Vincent Davis. Really, that, that was a bad run by Davis. That's blocked really well on the perimeter. Both Bartholomew is holding his block forever. Vincent Davis basically just ends up going down. That leads to a third and four. Yep. There's a couple of instances here where these pit, you know, ball carriers, tight end or you know, running back, need to finish the run. Is this two down territory? Listen, with the way points have been hard to come by, I'm fine kicking a field goal in this point if you don't pick up the first down. That's Hammond in the orbit. Abana can to the carry. Louisville right there. No gain on the play for Izzy Abana Kanda and Adula again. You know, Wes, it's been hard to run the football against this Louisville front. Slovis probably has not you know, created a ton of confidence in Frank Signetti Jr. or Pat Narduzzi in terms of making the decision. And so kicking a field goal in a tie ball game feels like the right decision to make. Ben Saul's on the year, seven of 10, his longest is 48 at Western Michigan. Left footed kicker. And it is good and pits in front. So Saul's field goal comes with under two to go here in the third. You know, from my angle, it looked pretty tight and ooh, ooh. and it was. Yeah. 37 yard field goal, 10th of the year for Saul's. Or eighth of the year in 11 tries. And Narduzzi's team ahead by three. Well. First ever series meeting, October 9th, 1976. This is Old okay. Pitt Stadium. And that is Tony Dorsett. Hey, even Matt Cavanaugh was running it back then, Wes. <laughs> Tony and Matt. Yeah. 27 to 6. Cavanaugh got a couple of touchdowns. He broke his leg in the second half, but the game was part of Pitt's national championship march. They went on to win the Sugar Bowl. It's funny, it's funny just seeing this. You mentioned, you know, you're talking Tony Dorsett. Matt Cavanaugh, shoot, he played over a decade in the NFL. Yeah. Think about some of the great players in that Pitt football program, you know, seemingly decade after decade from that era and to today. 
No return for Jordan. Cards will uh, scrimmage from their 25, Kelsey. Well, when I talked to Malik Cunningham this week, he told me one of the things that he worked on during the bye week was the mental aspect of things. He said, look, I know everything's not always going to go my way. And he actually went back to the Syracuse game, and he said, we came in ready, but I didn't respond to adversity. He told me he's got to do that, and in order to do that, he has to have faith in himself, believe in the confidence in himself and all the guys around him. And when he makes a mistake, come right back out there and forget about it. So we'll see how he's able to respond after that interception on the you last know, drive. Kelsey, interesting too because that was part of our conversation with Lance Taylor yesterday the whole mental side handling bad plays Cunningham on first down and a flag is thrown on the play ball incomplete trying to dial to the far side for Hudson and that was uh, Devonshire over there in coverage holding offense number 68 10 yard penalty First down. Michael Gonzalez. And I think he's holding John Morgan on the play and really didn't need to do it. Ball was coming out quickly. It's just you know, the timing. Here's 68. And, you know, it's the edge pressure. That hand outside. And you know, I'm not sure that that's a hold. But I think when your hand's outside, you, know, you kind of hug and then the guy goes down. Yeah. It looks like a hold even if it's not, which. That's how I would describe that. Scott Satterfield wanting a little quicker tempo out of his team here. Cunningham from the pocket. Now we'll tuck it and get out of bounds at the 23. Brandon Hill chased him out. It's an eight yard run. I would tell you, I feel like Pitt has done an excellent job of when Cunningham has taken off to run, but still is in a mode to pass. They've done an excellent job of covering downfield, West, which has prevented some of the big plays in the passing game off the off of a scramble where you know Cunningham throws the football. And instead it's it's been runs like that that he's been limited to. That's forward in motion. Cunningham looking right and caught. Flag thrown on the play, the grab by Hudson. Ball got knocked out. Around the 40 yard line. I think Louisville has recovered it. Might be forward on the football. But there's a penalty here. Holding. Offense number 55. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's on Caleb Chandler, who's making his 48th career start tonight. Yeah, and Chandler's, at, you know, playing left guard. He's right here and. It's basically the the entire rush on the on the right side here. He's working on Yancey and you know is it, is it Cancy and as Cancy decides to go with that rip move underneath, you know Chandler doesn't like it. Listen, the previous one wasn't a hold. I mean, like call it like it is right now, West. Previous yeah. one wasn't. That one was. Either way, this Louisville offense is going backwards right now. Now the loaded pistol set here for Cunningham. And Jawar Jordan across the 20, out near the 24, spilled by Marquez Williams. And that's back toward the original line on 11 yard run, but that'll be the final play of quarter three. Well, final play of quarter three, but Wes, you know, a chance, something because of that run, yeah. you at least have a chance on a third and long to start the fourth quarter. So Pitt has regained the lead a moment ago on a Ben Sauls field goal. We That's go to the, the final quarter. 15 minutes tonight at Cardinal Stadium. Great job of playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And so we got a close ball game, and that's without Louisville even really making it into the red zone. Cunningham's two of his last 10, throwing the football after starting the night five of six. And he'll throw here on third and almost 12. Across the field, and the catch is made. And Tyler Hudson helped out of bounds by Marquez Williams. But and, and, I think and, and, they're and where going they to mark this? him. Yeah. Well, he's, they got it at the 35, but they will set the football down and call it first down. Wes, that, that is a big spot and probably the right spot when you look at that there, where the catch is made and 
think about forward progress. It goes back to that 11 yard run on second down yeah. by Mitchell, which gives you a chance. And I, seems like upstairs probably going to look at this. I think they may want to have on a, the field is the runner made the line to gain. Previous play is under further review. Now the partisans here tonight won't like this. But there's some video here that leads to this discussion. Here it is. Catch by Hudson. He catches it behind the line now. Is that the forward progress? Because once he hits the ground, he doesn't get there. Restructured. This is a good job by the replay officials, and Louisville's going to come up a yard short. Basically, Hudson catches the football across the 35, but he's not contacted. So he brings himself shy of the 35-yard line before he is touched and forward progress is stopped, which then you know, creates a fourth and one situation and punting the football is the right move in a 10-3 football game with your defense playing well. Yeah, to your point, he comes down on the ground, short of it. Bassett hangs it out toward the Louisville bench and Devonshire, Devonshire I think had an idea until it drew closer to the bench area and said, you know what, we'll just let this fly. And so Pitt's going to start somewhere right around its 25-26 yard line after a 40-yard punt. Scott Satterfield, you know, first of three straight home games here after two road games. And really, Tim, after the loss at BC, these guys had to do some soul searching before they went to Virginia because they knew they were probably going without Malik Cunningham. Yeah, and I think how the BC loss happened was obviously disheartening for the entire staff, the, the, the fan base. And you say soul searching, I think it was a lot of discussion about you know, hey, what, you know, what's going on here? Do, does Scott Satterfield need to spend more time on the defense? And right. what's going on there? And the reality is this. They've got a really tough finish to their schedule, their, their season. Really tough. And they're going to continue to do a lot of things the way they've always done them, which is really create a, a good amount of success here. Yeah. False start. Offense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. First down. Another unforced error by Pitt tonight. Too many of those for Pat Narduzzi. Well, and listen, you're not running the ball great, and now you are creating a first and 15. Your quarterback has struggled through this football game. It's just it's hard to sustain drives that way. Yep. Slovis is 12 of 19 for 123. A Banna at the tail of the eye. And he gets the call, and boy, Yasir Abdullah has been everywhere. Well, and just how about the speed to, to run this down from behind? Here's Yasir Abdullah. It's outside zone run play to the right, and he just decides, hey, I'm going to run it down from behind. Now, the answer to that is, you know, a bootleg play. You know, a play, hey, hey you fake the outside zone, boot back around it if the backside is going to crash that hard. Yeah. Problem is, you need your quarterback to make good decisions if you feel comfortable with getting there. Three receivers and a Banacanda. Slovis from the pocket. Here's Izzy on the catch. Ball popped out. And did Pittsburgh get back on it? I think they did at the original line, the 26. A Banacanda. Well, had it punched out there by Monty Montgomery. And Wes, I have to say, I, I've seen Pitt. Let's face it. We, we know what Tennessee is now. They're toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tennessee. We've yeah. also seen this team struggle against Georgia Tech. They almost turned the football on their own end, protecting a three-point lead. Mm -hmm. This looks like the versus Virginia, excuse me, versus Georgia Tech version yeah. of the Pitt Panthers. Zabovic, by the way, fell back on that rock to keep Pitt from posting their fourth turnover. Third and ten, and we're going to get a timeout called by Pat Narduzzi to keep the play clock from timeout. ticketing them five Pitt. more. Their first, 30 seconds. Boy, the head coach of the Panthers in Media his eighth year. <laughs> be hard to win any of those games. Slovis with pressure coming, slips it. Abana Kanda couldn't hang on to it. Had Miner out in front. Had he caught it? 
Who Listen, knows? He may score, Wes, and Slovis just fires it at him. I mean, he it, look, they have the screen set up here, and he just whips this thing at him. He's right there. Get it to him gently. I mean, just, you know what I mean? Give him a chance to make the play on the football. Instead, he rifles it at him, and Marcus Miner's probably going to get the kickout block, and then no one's catching a Banacanda. Cam Guess hangs it high for Braden Smith, and he is taken down right away. Pittsburgh covered it, and that was P.J. O'Brien who made the stop after a 39-yard punt, but a fair catch or kick catch, kick catch interference coming up here on uh, Pittsburgh, I believe. During the kick, illegal block in the back. Oh. Receiving team number 14. 10 yard penalty. First out. So I guess they're saying that's a block in the back. Oh, well, yeah. Which leads to the, you know, contact with the returner, yep. you know, signaling the fair catch, which, you know, obviously you block a, a cover guy into him is. No, not the penalty on the, you know, it's the block in the back that's the penalty. Marvin Dallas guilty of the infraction. With just ahead of 12 to go. Travion Cooley who's playing hurt tonight. Had an arm injury in the first half, back in here in the second half. And he'll get the call on first down and breaks into the secondary. Cooley to midfield before Brandon Hill saves the touchdown. It's just blocked perfectly. They run you know, kind of the fly sweep motion, and that motion brings the defense with them. And Cooley, he mentioned it, Wes, playing with that, that elbow brace after injuring his arm early in the game. Just hits it right away. Young man from Nightdale, North Carolina. Grew up not far from Raleigh. Quite a recruit for... Piedmont, North Carolina native Scott Satterfield to get him to come to Louisville. Here he goes again. Fights through for about five to the 44. As the clock continues to turn, Deslin Alexander, the stop for Pitt. I'll say I'm somewhat surprised with the movement that Louisville's been able to get offensively at times against this defensive line, which is you know, probably you know, second to Clemson in the conference in terms of you know how disruptive they can be. Yep. That's Smith in motion. Cunningham's going to get it to him. Now they're going to throw back for Malik. They got the block, and here is Cunningham. Inside the 20, turns the corner to the 11. A.J. Woods got just enough to get Cunningham to the ground. 33 yards, Tim. Yeah, and really, if they're going to throw the ball back here, now it's going to be a backwards pass. Then they're going to release all these linemen out this way with Cunningham leaking backside. And by doing that, you just look at the convoy that they have going forward. That, that is a, a cool play design by Scott Satterfield. It's a well-timed call. And honestly, Pitt does a nice job of just rallying to prevent that from scoring. They're attending to an injured pit player a moment ago, and now he's off the field. You know, and we talk about explosive plays for this Louisville offense. That's the longest play of the night for him. Yep. And it's also, you know, put them in the red zone, and the red zone this season has been a struggle, and part of it has been, I think, Malik Cunningham trying to be too perfect. Only 13 touchdowns, 80 and 25 possessions coming in. Here's the give, and Cooley got spun around, and that was Wiltz, the linebacker, at the nine. And, and I, and I think with, like the, with the, I think a couple of things happened here. I think with the contact in the backfield, I think they were fortunate the ball didn't pop loose. You know, you just see, right. you know, kind of the contact between the motion man that's not timed up perfectly with Cooley. Then I think the, the swing down you know, to the ground, got a little attention from the folks here in the stands. Yep. 
That was Chris Bell, the young wide receiver who collided on the handoff play. And then that was Sherman, the tight end, that ended up on the ground. Here's Cunningham. He wants to throw. Looping for the end zone, and it is caught. And that is Sherman. Or oh, Lipson, I beg your pardon. Josh Lipson. Comes from deep on the depth chart. Well, Lipson does a good job. He runs to the post, but he does it after they run around to the corner. And by doing that, the defense gets drawn to the corner. Cunningham sees it perfectly. Nearly underthrows him too much, Wes, but Lipson does a good job of sticking with it and making a good grab. Second TD pass of the night for Cunningham. And the point is good. Woods almost blocked it, but Louisville's got a four-point lead. How about this? Well, how about this is right. Louisville finding back as Lipson is wide up in the end zone and Blake Cunningham fighting back. Since I was little. All right, Jordan. Shipley, by the way, 172 yards, two touchdowns, 27 carries. Story this week's going to be about the quarterback situation. Will Shipley was terrific. Well, you think think there's maybe a controversy happening? You think people might talk about that, Wes? Well, let's take a look at our Bojangles Big Bow moments of the game, and I'll tell you what, pretty good, Tim. Yeah, nice play design. Melton's going to go to the corner, and he brings the corner and the safety with him. In the wake of that release, Lifson's going to go to the post. And basically, he just allows the coverage to be drawn out, gets to the middle of the field, and that's good play design. And Brandon Hill takes the bait on Des Melton and lifts him with a ball that was underthrown for a big guy, does a good job of catching it down by his shoelaces. By the way, to finish your note a moment ago about the quarterback thing, Brandon Streeter after the game said, no, DJ's our quarterback. Oh, yeah, that's why he hadn't finished the game in a close game. Got it. <laughs> Middle of the field, and here is Slovis and Pitt now trailing four after Cunningham's second touchdown pass, and Abana Kanda breaking free to midfield. Cuts it back inside the 40 to the Louisville 39-yard line. Keytrell Clark the stop on a 36-yard run. Yeah, it's a zone will run. Everyone's working this way. Tight end's going to come back. This is typically a windback run, but Abana Kanda just keeps it front side. Just does a good job of reading it. And you know, with all the speed in the world, that's great, but you've got to see it well as a back. And Abana Kanda saw that perfectly to keep that front side and, and take it outside. He's got his sixth 100 yard game of his pit career. Play fake Slovis, hit as he throws, tried to go to Bartholomew. Abdullah was the guy who banged away at Keaton Slovis. Abdullah once again just kind of being exactly where he needs to be whether he's rushing the quarterback getting his hands up to bat a ball covering yep. the tight end in the flat as they're trying to get it to him saw him with the pick earlier and he's been everywhere Bartholomew out of the ball game Jared Wayne Kanate Mumfield here to the field Abanacanda again Ball's inside the 35 to the 34. It's now going to be third down and five. Rieger tripped him up. And then Pitt's starting to, to lean on Louisville a little bit in the run game. That's the same run as the big one of Banacanda just ripped off just to the other side in terms of how they blocked it. And I think with how this night has gone, Third and five. I may be thinking screen game. We're just getting a band of can of the ball in some other fashion. Johnson in motion. A band of can bangs into the line and got turned back. And again, Yasir Abdullah. What a night this guy's had. He's been all over the place, and he just does a good job. Here he is in here. He gets penetration as they're trying to, you know, wind this back again. He just kind of fights off a blocker, creates space, and 
Fourth and seven. Looks like Pitt's going to go for it. Slovis has a Banacanda with him. Thompson and Mumfield to the far side. Wayne here to the field. Lula brings four. Slova shoots it down the field, incomplete, looking for Mumfield. Pat Narduzzi thought he might be getting a flag on the play, did not get one. What's and I say Mumfield shaking up. Yeah, and it's interesting because Mumfield, Wes, like as he's coming underneath, that's where Slovis wants to go. It's hard to tell if Clark's feet just get tangled up with him or if he grabs him. He's running this little under route. Does that right hand hook him? Slovis certainly thought so and doesn't draw a flag, but what a stop by this Louisville defense. Ooh, yeah. You think about what they've done tonight, you know, coming up with the turnovers. The stop here, yep. just hanging in there, continuing to fight the fight. And now all of a sudden, with halfway through the fourth, Malik Cunningham comes out here and a couple first downs will take about three and a half, maybe four minutes off this clock, Tim. Here is Cunningham running right. Flag thrown. He tried to slide the ball upfield out of bounds. Holding offense number 56, 10 yard penalty. First out. Renato Brown, the sophomore right tackle. I like the aggressiveness. They were trying to fake a quarterback sweep. Cunningham's getting ready to throw this. You see the hold on the right side on Brown. But they were bluffing blocks on the outside and trying to get Tyler Hudson on a deep angle corner. But, just, you know, Pitt covers it well. And, you know, to make it kind of worse for Louisville offensively, they get the hold on Brown. Mm. So now it becomes a first and 20 scenario. Five penalties, 55 yards tonight for the Cards. Pistol set for Cunningham, and Cooley can't get started. Kalijah Cansey. Well, that's Cansey getting rid of a double team. Gonna make the play. His quickness at his size, you know, 280 pounds, is impressive. You think about that defensive stop. You start to mention West the ability to kind of take some time off the clock, maybe. Mm -hmm. Get in the field goal range, attempt the field goal. Instead, Louisville's going backwards. Yeah. Second and 21. Cunningham bailing from the pocket. Here comes the pressure. He'll throw back underneath. That's Cooley on the catch. Cunningham took a shot. No flag on the play. And Malik is down back around the 12-yard line. Third down coming up. And when the ball left his hand, I lost the sight of how Cunningham went to the ground. That's Dayon Hayes returning to the lineup number 50, and Kamara turns a shoulder on him. And Kamara turns a shoulder on him. It did not look like it was up high. Either way, Cunningham There's took no a good shot. There's no foul for pass interference on the play. The result is third down. And I think that the reason you know, they wondering if it was Time pass interference. For an injured offensive player. Because there was a block out on the perimeter. I think it was unclear whether it was across the line of scrimmage or not. The throw was across the line of scrimmage, but the block ends up being, you know, behind it. The fans here feel like, you know, Cunningham, you know, maybe should have, you know, received a, a call, to, but I said it when I saw it live. Did West, to me, it did not look like it was up high. You know, he's running full speed. The Camaro. And, Tim, at some point, you go from a passer to a runner and all those type things, too, when you're. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, here's the deal. He's outside the pocket, but he still is, he's throwing the football. Correct. So he's going to be protected as somebody that's a thrower in that environment. And. You know, it's not crown of the helmet. It's not that. And 
didn't seem like it was too late either. Brock Doman to throw, pressuring, cuts it loose down the field, and it is caught. Is it ruled in bounds? It is. Tyler Hudson with a heck of a grab at the 36. Hey, Hudson with a heck of a grab. And we're going to look at the quarterback as well. Defensive player. It almost looked like we got to take another look and see if Hudson's left foot stays in bounds. Early my, on the field is a completed pass. I have to tell you Previous that. play is under further review. The injured player is Bengali Kamara in an off the ball hit by Renato Brown. So we got a lot going on here. Injured player and a review. We'll check it out after this. Call on the field stands on the throw to Tyler Hudson. 28 yards, Tim. West well, surprising to me because that left foot looks like it's in the white. And you know, I don't want it to take away from the effort but Brock Doman because he hung in the pocket and took a big time shot. And you know, so much so that Scott Satterfield was hoping for a targeting call. Either way, it's a good job of hanging in the pocket by Doman. Hudson makes the grab and a bit surprised that they ruled him in bounds. Malik Cunningham has come back in the ball game. Travion Cooley's with him. Marshawn Ford's in the ball game. And straight ahead goes Cooley. And wrapped up inside the 35 by Tyler Wiltz, among other Panther tacklers. And Wes, you said it earlier when Louisville got the possession. Now they went backwards because of penalties. Yep. But that throw there with Doman coming in the game has now created an environment where yeah, now that clock is running. And with you know just how the offense has worked for Pitt, you know, being in a two-minute scenario is a very different environment for what they want to do, what they're good at doing, right. rather than being able to have their traditional offense on display. Second down, seven for the cards. Play clock down to one. They get it snapped. Cunningham's going to keep it. And Baldonado makes the play at the 31. Two yard gain. Third down and about five here. Louisville's done this a lot. Looks like they're going fast. Really, what they want to do is they want to get a look at this defense. Yeah. See the play clock, bottom of your screen here. Cunningham the snap, Panthers trying to get there. He will put it up for grabs and out of bounds. Tansy was there, David Green was bearing down for Pitt, and Malik Cunningham was running out of time. Running out of time and he makes a, a good decision and with where you are, it creates an opportunity to to kick a field goal and give yourself a touchdown lead. Yep. Turner missed his first. He's made nine straight, including a 48-yarder three weeks ago at BC. This is right in that neighborhood. Snap spot. Try is away. And it's good. Big kick in this environment with how this game has gone, and that was true. Yep. He knew it right off his foot. How about the way Pitt has just decided to battle in this game? Pat Narduzzi is trying, I mean, trying to create a little crowd noise on the road. Yeah. I think it's, he's either screaming, trying to distract the kicking operation or just letting us know how he feels about how his team has protected the football tonight. Don't forget the ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified October 23rd through the 30th as ACC Unity Week. And 
tonight both these teams recognized Unity Week before the game. And now the Cards trying to put their second straight win together after a victory at Virginia two weeks ago and in the process snap Pittsburgh's seven game road win streak. That's the second longest in active FBS behind Georgia who's won nine in a row. And now with 421 to go and two timeouts, Pat Narduzzi's got to hope his offense can find a gear here. Does. Now the good news about the gear is you don't have to be operating with up tempo. Just under four and a half minutes. Nothing has to change about your offense. You don't need to be in a hurry. The run game, a, obviously a huge part of what you're able to do, but we're also going to see what Keaton Slovis is made up of after a pretty rough night. First down throw, and that's Bartholomew the catch beyond the 30, and he got dumped. Benjamin Perry, who've been pretty productive in the last uh, four ball games, with a stop after a gain of six to Bartholomew. And I'm a, a little surprised at the tempo, not yeah. huddling, and unless it's just to get something going because the offense has been struggling. Slovis looking to throw again. Shoots it for Thompson, who makes a terrific catch. Gavin Thompson, if it stands, it'll be his second catch of the year, and he's shaken up on the play on a 19-yard throw. Well, he runs an inside corner route, and really, if Cottrell Clark will turn around, he's going to pick this football off. Slovis really had no business making that throw, and just a great reaction by Thompson to the football. And looks like he also injured himself on the play. Yeah, he comes out, and Jalen Barden comes in. Here's Slovis again. Going to throw it downfield for Wayne, who makes the catch and then can't hang on. I thought Wayne had flagged it down one-handed against Jarvis Brownlee. That was almost the best catch I've ever seen in person by Jared Wayne. I mean, he is pushing off like crazy. And he nearly backhand stabs that football. And to me, look, there's initial contact there by Brownlee. To me, that's too much contact down the field for a flag not to be thrown. Either side that you look at it. Initially, it's Brownlee. Probably too much contact on him. But then at that point, it's Jared Wayne just pushing off. Five seconds on the play clock here. Man in motion. They got to get it snapped. They do just in time. Here's Slovis again. Going to gun it for Wayne. And. Prior to the snap, timeout, pit, their second, 30 seconds. The uh, Pat Narduzzi burns now, Tim. He's only got one timeout left to go here in the final 320, and his team needs a touchdown. Yeah, and I just don't know how you know, kind of in this environment, you're not you're not ready to, to, to snap the football. Not, yeah. not ready to play to play. You know, you've been rushing, you've been hustling. You know, for a team that is a veteran football team, that's a little bit surprising. Yeah. I feel like Wes, I don't know about you, I feel like it's gone off the rails a little bit. <laughs> I mean right. we have plays where, you know, it does it looks like it's gonna get overturned. It ends up being probably the biggest play of the football game. Right. Then you got, you know, contact down the field, coaches yelling for targeting calls with hits on their quarterbacks. Quarterbacks in and out of the game. I mean, how many times have we seen Malik Cunningham come out of the game? This has just turned wild. We got a head coach in Pat Narduzzi, you know, screaming, you know, trying to create crowd noise yeah. on the road to disrupt a kicker. So now second and 10, Pittsburgh one timeout left. Louisville all three with the touchdown lead. Slovis with the cards bringing the house. Tried to get it to Mumfield. He broke the route off. Well overthrown. And now it's third and ten. And a flag has been dropped back near the 41 of Pitt. Personal foul. Helping the passer. Defense number 22. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. I, I mean. I don't know how that's any different than the one Scott Satterfield was griping about earlier. Right. It's not crown of the helmet. It, to me, that's not in the head and neck area. 
I, I mean, I... Let me just say this, here's the deal. Everyone hates these targeting calls, roughing, things like that. It's right. obviously something that it is a polarizing thing. The way it has been officiated tonight in terms of what's been roughing on a quarterback and what has not been yeah. has been wildly inconsistent, and it's hard to, to justify it. Now we got early movement on Pitt. That'll cost them five. Ball start. Offense, number 57. Five-yard penalty. First down. Gabe Hoy who is injured earlier in the season, fifth-year senior from Pittsburgh. And he's playing at right tackle now. And uh, Matt Gonzalez has moved over to play left tackle. We've also seen Branson Taylor there tonight as well in the line. And Slovis got hit. That ball's out. I think players thought there was going to be a Whistle, Keytrail Clark has picked it up and is running to the end zone. And Louisville may very well have iced this thing. Abdullah was in the mix of Slovis when he cut it loose. Well, it was Abdullah and Gabe Hoy just, he doesn't get out of the stance. I'm not sure if there was some type of confusion in terms of the snap Ruling count. on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense and returned the, for a there's touchdown. There's Abdullah, but look at Gabe Hoy. play is under further review. He never gets out of a stance. The right side of the offensive line never gets out of their stance for Pitt. And because of that, Slovis gets rocked. And now we're going to see and to me, that seems like the ball is out of his hand before that hand is coming forward. And Wes, I just said this came off the rails. The reality is we had a right side of an offensive line not move. You see Abdullah, who's been all over the place, just absolutely light up Keaton Slovis. Ball comes out and run back for a score. This it's is a, wild. It's a 59-yard return by Clark and could very well put this thing on ice tonight for Louisville. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown, Louisville. So in the span of a minute and 18 seconds, Louisville's kicked the field goal to make it a touchdown advantage and now taking Pitt's fourth turnover of the night on a fumble return by Clark. If you see Abdullah, He's, he's been unbelievable tonight. He has been absolutely unbelievable. And the second time he gets to grab the belt. 59-yard return. And the point after Turner is good. It's 24 to 10. And our MVP of the game brought to you by Sport Clips. Well, this is an easy one. It's Yasir Abdullah because he, he's been everywhere and Jaya Diaby, both of them, because they've been all over the place. But Yasir Abdullah, the guy that has really just shown up kind of in the biggest moments. And he's well, been everywhere. And when it mattered the most, obviously some confusion up front for Pitt. The play he makes after a roughing call that was called on him. Yep. Well, just you unbelievable. See the Yaya Diaby, Yasir Abdullah, Sport Clips, MVP of the game. You see the seven tackles, the two for loss, the interception, the forced fumble for Abdullah. That's a month and a half for some really good players, and that's a night for him. Man. And hey, I mean, let's just think about this, too. I mean, like, the, all the talk around here has been. Hey, what's going on with this defense? Scott Satterfield need to spend more time with the defense. Who's calling plays offensively? All of that. The reality is, is they're operating organizationally much like they always have. Yeah. The defense has been playing with their hair on fire tonight. Offensively, you know, it's been a struggle with the quarterback in and out of the lineup. But in terms of team performance, it's been a pretty good effort by Louisville.
So with 303 to go, Pitt takes over at the 25. But Brian Brown said these three things just to us yesterday in the meeting. Pressure the quarterback, early stop on the run game, and cloud the passing lanes. Well, I, check, I mean, check, and check. No doubt about it. Talk about clouding the passing lanes. That guy right there, Abdullah, has done that a number of times. Look, this is an over two-score game with over three minutes left, but the offense for Pitt's going to have to look drastically different. Slovis to the far side, and the catch made. That is Jalen Barden, his third grab of the year, but it's only for about four, maybe five yards to the 30. And now right. Pitt's going to have to move fast, and they're going to have to take chances being aggressive with the football down the field. Throwing five-yard hitches isn't going to get it done. Slovis flushed again, and he will throw it away, and that was Abdullah one more time. Guess who, Wes? Yeah. Guess who? 22 has been incredible. I'm going to tell you right now, there's been very few games where you just watch and you say, you know what? It's just a little inside move by Abdullah. Like, hey, there's a defensive player who takes over and dominates a football game. Saw it last year in a Florida State game. Seeing it here tonight with Yusir Abdullah taking over. Third down, Slovis in trouble again, and it'll be sacked. Monty Montgomery. And I think Pittsburgh is burned. Did they burn a timeout here? Saw some coaches start towards the field here. Nope. The clock stopped with 2.27 to go. I think they run stacking, if nothing else. And now on fourth and full 10, Panthers don't have any choice. I'm amazed by this, Wes. The domination up front yeah. in the trenches. And we talked kind of in our week of prep here, veteran offensive line, veteran defensive line for Pitt tonight. But Louisville has dictated tempo from the trenches. And Carter Johnson couldn't hang on to that. It was raked out of there by MJ Griffin. And with 158 to go, the cards, whose remaining opponents entered play today, at a combined 31 and 8 after tonight, and ACC opponents at 21 and 5. Louisville's going to post their fourth win overall and their second in the ACC. And Wes, we talked about it at the top. This is a critical game for both of these football teams. You know, Pitt's schedule, you look at it, not as intimidating as Louisville's. And that's why the importance of this game for Louisville, especially with kind of some of the talk around the program. But Pat Narduzzi felt like his team should have been a ranked team. Right. And to come in here, we talk about, you know, what they've done on the road and struggle offensively the way they have. You saw Banacanda run wild a couple weeks ago, Wes, in I person. Did. Yeah. And tonight, he's had a couple of long shots, but he's not been nearly as loose as he was two weeks ago on a Saturday night against the Hokies. We're talking about 10 points yeah. against a, a defense that struggled against Boston College. Well, and I, I'm, I go back to the conversation that you and Kelsey and I had yesterday with our producer, Ben Hogg, and our director, Kyle Brown, about Brian Brown, the defensive coordinator, Scott Satterfield, Lance Taylor, the offensive coordinator, talking about the little things on and off the field after they lost at Boston College. And quite frankly, they had to look in the mirror and decide, right? They did. And I think they probably, you know, started focusing on some details. But, you know, at the same time, I think there was also a calmness and a confidence in their process. I mean, because all three of them, none of them seemed uptight when we talked no, to them. No. And they knew a good football team was coming to town. And this is quite an effort. And look, best to do it. With Malik Cunningham getting knocked out of the game multiple times. Right. And 
You can be assured the cards are going to enjoy this one tonight. This has been a physical football game. Both sides. Even maybe over the line, if you will, at times between the two. But Pitt goes to Chapel Hill. You guys, it'll be interesting to see how they rally with Carolina off a of bye next Saturday night at Keenan. And that's an explosive offense. You can say what you want about how they're, you know, they've struggled defensively. Out. Louisville, their first. 30 seconds. But the Tar Heels to me, Wes. Please like, put that's five an ascending. On the game clock. Five seconds. That's an ascending football team. Right. You know, and I, and I think because of a young quarterback and you know trying to kind of improve if you can on defense, but they're getting better. Yeah. Don't forget right after the ball game, the ACC Huddle Post Game Show. Jordan Cornette, the fellas, full recap of all today's ACC action. Wins by Virginia on Thursday night against Georgia Tech. Today you had Clemson, Duke, and Wake Forest a winner. The Deacons will be here in Louisville next Saturday afternoon at 3.30. Sam Hartman, 313 yards and five more touchdowns today. We said that their schedule was not getting easier. You mentioned Sam Hartman. Man, Dave Clawson has done an incredible job with that program. On fourth down, Cunningham is just going to heave it with the game clock expiring out of bounds, and that will do it. The Louisville Cardinals snap Pittsburgh's seven-game road win streak, and Scott Satterfield's team puts a two-touchdown victory together to go to four and three and two and three in the ACC. Pat Narduzzi's team now four and three and one and two in the ACC. Headed to Chapel Hill. And let's go downstairs, Kelsey, with the winning coach. Coach Satterfield, congratulations. I want to start with your defense because what a performance you saw from those guys. What'd you think? Incredible. Uh, incredible. Um, the turnovers that they created, they gave up a few yards, but they, kept, they held them out of the end zone, gave up one touchdown. Uh, but the turnovers was the, was the name of the game. And then I think um, the pressure we put on the quarterback in the fourth quarter was huge. You come off a bye week against a team that has won seven straight on the road. It's homecoming night, and you guys win this game with a tough schedule ahead. What does this win do for your program? Well, that's awesome. You know, I mean, it's back-to-back -back ACC wins for us, and, um, you know, we had our bye week last week. We're taking it one game at a time. We're going to relish in this right here. we got a great Wake Forest team coming in next week. Coach, congratulations. All right, thank you. Kelsey, thanks. We know that uh, you're going to visit with Yasir Abdullah in a moment, and that'll be well worth it because that young man had a terrific night. And uh, I mean, he had a great, I think, 17-0 run. Yeah. All right, Kelsey, go. Hey, yeah, I'm here with Yasir. Yasir, first of all, what was different for this defense tonight? Oh, man, we just stuck to the plan, man, all week, man. We just been prepar pre preparing for this team, man. Just, just, keep, just keep practicing, keep practicing. That's why I tell my boys, man, preparation is key. Always. So many guys were able to come out here and make plays, but you in particular, I want to read these stats because you probably don't even know. Seven tackles for loss, or two tackles for loss, seven tackles, one sack, one interception, and one forced fumble. When you hear that, what does it mean to you? Man, I, I, I just, I just want to. I just want to. I just want to thank God, man. Grace over law, man. I could. I could have done all those things without law, man. So I, and my teammates, of course, man. Coaches that they believe in me, man. Ever since I was a freshman. So I, I'd like to thank them a lot, man. I could have done without them. This year, what do these guys mean to you as they stand around you and celebrate this? Oh man, it, it means everything to me, man. They, they, they've been there for, uh, through thick and thin. When I have bad games, they've been there for me. When I have good games, they've been there for me. They're like my brothers. There's a sign behind you that says party in the locker room, so I'm going to let you get to it. Yasir, congratulations. Kelsey, thank you. Terrific night. Yasir Abdullah, Yaya Diaby, Malik Cunningham delivered the goods. Tim, heck of a win for Louisville. That's a huge win for Louisville. Defense led the way, but that's a big team win for the Cards. Great to be with Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs. Happy birthday to our producer, Ben Hall. And our director, Kyle Brown. West Durham from Derby City. Now here is Jordan Cornette and the ACC Huddle. 